In the world of aviation, 20 years is an era. After 30, a plane is often decommissioned, and after 50, it's sent off to a museum. But the B-52 Stratofortress strategic bomber has defied all these laws of time. For over 50 years, it's remained a relevant U.S. combat tool, and thanks to the B-52J modification, it could surpass its 100th year of service. This aircraft has long ceased to be old, becoming the living embodiment of the idea that time can be conquered through engineering. In today's video, we invite you to recall with us why the B-52 is so special as we take a look at the updates this immortal steel giant will receive. On March 15, 1952, the first Stratofortress rolled off the assembly line at Boeing Plant 2 in Seattle, Washington. The massive aircraft weighed over 200 tons and was impressively tall, comparable to a four-story building. Despite numerous design changes along the way, this moment was a triumph not only for Boeing, Pratt & Whitney, but also for the U.S. Air Force, which saw the efforts of all the teams that created this colossus come to fruition, giving the U.S. a second-generation long-range bomber destined to become the cornerstone of the nuclear triad for decades to come. The B-52's development history began with the creation of the B-47, the first aircraft of a new generation that became the long-awaited trigger for the U.S. Air Force's transition from the era of piston-engine strategic bombers to a new era of jet engines and swept wings. In addition to swept wings, Boeing's XB-47 also used engine pylons, allowing more fuel to be stored within the wings themselves, a marked contrast to previous aircraft designs whose engines were built into the wings, eliminating the possibility of fuel storage. The new approach not only reduced the weight of the wings, but also greatly simplified the maintenance of the aircraft's engines, and all of the above solutions became an excellent aid to Boeing's specialists during the development of the Stratofortress. However, it was not without its own headaches, namely Strategic Air Command SAC, which too frequently changed its requirements for the future bomber. But by 1948, they'd finally identified the main vector for the second-generation bomber, thus requiring 8,000-mile range with a 4,000-mile combat radius, cruising speed of 550 miles over the protected area, tactical operating altitude of 45,000 feet, droppable chassis, fully ventilated and self-sealing fuel tanks, and the ability to refuel an aircraft in mid-air. The first Stratofortress took to the skies in April 1952, and by June 1955 it had entered service with the 93rd Heavy Bombardment Wing at Castle Air Force Base in California. The B-52 was designed for long-range bombing, but what made it truly a global threat was the introduction of Loop Ho's aerial refueling technology. It immediately began putting its new knowledge into practice as part of Operation Power Flight conducted in January 1957. It proved that the United States could conduct global bombing operations deploying nuclear weapons from the Stratofortress at long ranges and safely accomplishing the missions. To forever enter the textbooks and the list of record-breaking aircraft, the Power Flight members had to cover more than 24,325 miles in 45 hours and 19 minutes with several mid-air refuelings by KC-97s. Following this, the B-52 set several more world records, including a closed-circuit speed record of 6,200 and 3,100 miles without payload and a world record for unrefueled flight distance of over 10,078 miles and then freshened its own record by flying without refueling for more than 12,532 miles over Seattle, Fort Worth, and the Azores. The bomber's remarkable endurance made it a decisive factor in search missions as just two B-52s could scan an area of 364,000 square kilometers comparable to the entire area of Japan and was especially important when working with the U.S. Navy on anti-submarine missions or detecting enemy fleets. But can an aircraft that entered service during the Eisenhower administration compete adequately with the more modern American B-2 Spirit bombers and especially the newest B-21 Raider? And most importantly, is the cost of upgrading the Stratofortress justified? In short, yes. Its combat versatility has been an undeniable selling point since its debut during the Vietnam War, where the B-52 became a carpet-bombing hero with its ability to drop over 70,547 pounds of explosives on the heads of its enemies. Over time, Long-range missiles like the AGM-158 JASM and the Harpoon anti-ship missile were added to the impressive bombing record, and the bomber's contributions were once again recognized in the international mission against ISIS, 
during which, before being replaced by B-1S, B-52s flew over 1,850 combat sorties, dropping some 12,000 bombs, which proved crucial in defeating the militants in Mosul. But legends also need updates to stay in shape. Boeing made the same decision, unveiling renderings of the updated Stratofortress in the fall of 2022, along with comprehensive plans to upgrade the entire fleet of operational B-52Hs to the B-52J model. And in the spring of 2023, this was confirmed in U.S. Air Force budget documents reviewed in an article by Air and Space Forces magazine. Since the early 1960s, the B-52 has been equipped with the Pratt & Whitney TF-33 turbofan engine. Since nothing lasts forever, these engines, the last of which was built in 1985, had long since reached the end of their service life. And the time had finally come to find a worthy replacement. In April 2020, the U.S. Air Force issued a request for proposals for 608 commercial engines, as well as spare parts and support equipment, with a contract award expected in the spring of 2021. As part of the Commercial Engine Reengineering Program CERP, companies began offering their solutions to the military. For General Electric, these were the CF-3410 and Passport turbofan engines. Pratt & Whitney proposed the PW800 series of turbofans and Rolls-Royce BR725 designated F-130. Ultimately, it was the latter that the military liked the most, and it was decided to purchase 650 of these engines for $2.6 billion, of which 608 were to be replaced and 42 would remain as spares. Initially, the new engine proposal for the future B-52J modification called for a reduction in engine capacity from 8 to 4. However, it turned out that this reduction would have necessitated additional, more drastic changes to the bomber's systems and control surfaces, including the rudder, which would have had a detrimental effect on the cost and complexity of the project. Interestingly enough, in the renderings presented by Boeing, many noted a slightly modified shape of the aircraft's nose and a pair of fairings removed from underneath it, which were first added to the B-52G and B-52H modifications back in the 1970s. Simply put, it seems like they were trying to return the plane to its classic appearance. The left Rodome housed the Westinghouse and AVQ-22 low-light level television LLTV system, the right Rodome housed the Hughes and AAQ-6 forward-looking infrared FLIR system, and together they made up the NASQ-151 electro-optical viewing system EVS, whose primary responsibility was to ensure crew safety at extremely low altitudes as well as provide some surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities.